Good evening. Welcome back to The Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Schrader. Across the board for me, Tim Dennis. Good evening, Mr. Dennis. Good evening, Mr. Schrader. Well, we had a great time today. We're going to be back out there tomorrow at the Radisson in Roseville. We yep. have Crypticon going on out there. It's a great horror movie convention. Mm-hmm. You can come out and meet a lot of great celebrities, see some of the local things going on. You can meet our buddies from the Ghost Bust and 911 group are out there. That's true, they are. And they have the Ectomobile. So if you're a Ghost uh, ghost Hunters or Ghostbusters fan, rather, they have the Ecto-1, the car that the Ghostbusters drive. They have their version of it out there. It's fantastic. You can pose with it, get pictures. And, again, if you want to see some funny stuff like their... Um, uh, information and, and some of the little uh, snippets that they've put up on their sites, you can go to myspace.com backslash ghost bustin 911. It's G H O S T B U S T I N 911. A lot of fun. Uh, great guys. Very funny. You can go behind the scenes with them and, and what they're working on in their movie. They're actually going to be filming tomorrow and they're looking for extras. I wonder oh. if I should mention this on the air. I think you should. Should I? Yeah. Why All right, not? they're looking for extras. So if you're interested in this, uh, tomorrow, I think it's around noon, they're going to be filming at the firehouse out by the state fairgrounds. Because they, they convert that firehouse, I guess, into the Ghostbusters lair right. um, when they're filming. So if you guys are interested, go on out there around noon. I'm sure you'll be able to find that they need people outside pretending to be protesters. <laughs> so if you're interested, you're in the Twin Cities area and you'd like to be a part of that, go out there and check them out. It's just a great bunch of guys. Funny as hell, and they've got some cute ideas that they're doing for their own little uh, deal. Yeah. And funny enough, the government's looking into the Ectomobile right now as a possible uh, energy alternative. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff uh, up there. You can actually meet a lot of the different uh, cel- local celebrities and, and uh, horror movie makers. Uh, we've got the lovely and talented Kelly Maroney sitting right next to Darkness Radio Table. Yes, she is. She is from uh, the movie um, uh, Night of the Comet. She's also Chopping Mall. She was in uh, um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Zero Boys, a lot of great movies, and uh, sitting right next to us, and this was an exciting deal, we got John Kassir, mm-hmm. who does the voice of Crypt Keeper, and he's going to be with us in the next hour that, of the show. That's not the most important voice he does, Dave. <clears throat> no, I know. How cool is that? I know. They're tiny, they're toony, they're, they're all, all a little loony. loony. He's and Buster this, Bunny. He is. He's Buster Bunny. Yeah. And he's going to be out there um, signing autographs. He'll also, check this out, for only 25 bucks, folks. If you go out there to Crypticon, for 25 bucks, you can pay the Crypt Keeper. He'll do a voicemail message for you in the voice of the Crypt Keeper or Buster Bunny uh, on your cell phone. So you can actually have the Crypt Keeper answer your phone for you. It's awesome. Great guy. Uh, great autographs out there. They've got um, some of the guys that play Jason and uh, uh, Michael Myers and Leatherface from the different movies. I'm sorry, their names ran past me as I was going through there, but we also have Chris Sarandon, a great actor, and he looks just like he did, dude. The hair's just a little bit grayer yep. than it was, but he looks just like he did in Fright Night, and uh, he was Prince Humperdinck and Princess oh, Bride. you can't say that till He was 11. also uh, the voice of Jack Skellington in the movie Nightmare Before Christmas. He's out there signing autographs. Uh, there's a lot of really fun people, and Doug Jones from yep. Hellboy and Silver Surfer and all those movies is out there. Wasn't he in an X-Men movie, too? Wasn't he one of the characters in an X-Men movie? I don't know. Which, I don't know. which character? Uh, I want to say it was the third X-Men movie, and it was... Uh, I think he was uh, Larry the Elbow. Yes, he was That's, Larry the Mutant Elbow, yes, with the one too many bones in the joint. Yes, and actually he has a new movie coming out, and he'll talk about that coming up too. Uh, so we've got a lot of cool stuff, but come on out there. Uh, very reasonable rates. Go on out to the Roseville Radisson, which is right off of uh, Cleveland Avenue, I think. Highway, uh, highway th- 35W and uh, the uh, Cleveland Avenue slash County Road C exit. Right, and it's right there. You can't miss it. Uh, I think festivities kick off. Maybe Ben can look this up for us. Or you can go to CrypticonMinneapolis.com. Again, CrypticonMinneapolis.com. Check it out. Tim and I are out there signing, saying hi, and, and shaking babies and kissing hands. Yep. Or, Whatever you want us to Love do. to shake some babies. That's right. <laughs> We've got a lot of fun stuff that'll be going on tomorrow. Um, so come on out and uh, say hi to us and say hi to all the fantastic stars. But right now, Tim, we have a star within our own midst. We do. Yeah. Every time we go out to the Stanley Hotel, you know, people are excited to meet the ghost hunters. They're excited to meet Chris and Patrick. Mm-hmm. But the guy that they all line up for that they're so excited to meet is Billy. He's, Billy Ward. He's the man. He is the man. He is uh, Billy Ward is like the historian of the Stanley here. He's uh, the, one of the tour leaders and guides, runs that whole area. Uh, Billy actually grew up in Aurora, Colorado. He spent eight years now in Estes Park, and he spent the lax, uh, last six years at the Stanley Hotel. He started out at the Guard Gate, moved up to Night Auditor, and then took over five years ago, 
doing what he does there now. Billy's been in numerous TV, internet, and radio shows, including the Sci-Fi Channel's Ghost Hunters, PBS's Great Lodges of National Parks, the Travel Channel's America's Most Terrifying Places, and soon it's about to be besmirched, Tim. Yvette and Carl have descended upon the Stanley Hotel. You're kidding, Most really? Haunted filmed an episode there. Billy's going to be in that. Uh, and Billy Ward also just authored the book, The Stanley Hotel, 1909 to 2009, celebrating 100 years. His, uh, his warm wit and charm is loved by all the people that meet him at our Darkness Radio events, and we're pleased to have him here with us this evening. Please welcome to the Darkness on the Edge of Town, Mr. Billy Ward. Good evening, Billy. Hey, guys. How you doing? Doing great. Thanks for coming on the show and spending some time with us tonight. Oh, sure. It's a pleasure. It's always, it's always fun having Darkness Radio up here with their events. Yeah, we have a great time up there, and we have a bunch of great people, don't we? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you think when you come in there with 200, 220 people, it's going to get rambunctious, there's going to be problems. Have you ever met a nicer group of people? No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, they're just sweet. I mean, they're no conventioneers, so you probably don't have people dropping water bombs off the top yeah. shelf. But, <laughs> Well, Billy, start us off. Give us some history about the Stanley Hotel. Well, the uh, Stanley Hotel, it's been around for 100 years now. This will be our, our, our centennial celebration this summer. It was built by F.O. Stanley. He and his twin brother were actually the builders of the Stanley Steamers that you hear so much right. about. Uh, that's not where they made their money, but they're famous for the Stanley Steamers. They did a little bit of everything throughout their lifetimes. Actually, they made most of their money in photography. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they uh, back in the early 1900s, to do a photograph, it was a wet plate process, they called it. You put the chemicals on there, you stick it in the camera, and that's how you took a photograph. They added gelatin to the chemicals and made it a dry plate process. This actually is how rolled film for cameras, if anybody still used it, rolled film. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, this is how rolled film came about. And they made about $10 million with that process. Wow, not too shabby. Yeah. In uh, 1904, they sold the patent for the photographs to George Eastman. Okay, which Eastman became Kodak. Eastman Kodak, right. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So uh, they, so they they were entrepreneurs, man. They had their hands in just about everything. And for tell people, what is the Stan, Stanley Steamer? I think a lot of people think it's a, a vacuum cleaner and steam cleaner. Not a carpet cleaner. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the Stanley Steamo Automobiles, um, steam-driven auto. Uh, Jay Leno actually owns two of them. Um, and you guys, you have one there in the lobby, right? Yeah, we've got one in the lobby. And uh, this summer, we're going to redo our carriage house. It used to be the garage for the Stanley Steamers. We're going to redo it. We got a grant from uh, the government for historical restoration. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah, we're going to redo that, and we're going to move the Stanley Museum into the carriage house, and they're bringing six steamers with them. Wow. So uh, next summer, you'll be able to, when you come up here in the spring, I hope, maybe we'll get you right in the steamers. Oh, that would be awesome. I'd love that. Now, what's, uh, now, Billy, the carriage house, that's crazy haunted, isn't it? Yeah, it's a little, well... The building is about ready to fall over. Right. So structurally, it's scary just right off the bat. But the carriage house is uh, one of the areas we don't necessarily take people to a lot right. of times. It's, well, why don't we? We'll come back to that with some of the ghost stories. But let's go ahead and go back. Uh, go back into their history and tell us a little bit more about what the Stanleys did and how they got this uh, beautiful hotel. And and we'll start getting into some of the ghost stories. Okay. Um, F O. He. Uh, he made the cars, and the dry plate process was in Watertown, Massachusetts. And in 1903, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Um, very common for any kind of lung disease back then. It was called consumption. Everything was considered tuberculosis. Right. 1903, he was diagnosed with it. Two of his brothers had already died of tuberculosis. And his mother also died of the disease. So when he found, finds out that he's diagnosed with tuberculosis, he's going to listen to what the doctors tell him. Uh, back at that time, it was thought if you move here to the West, the drier climate would help ease your symptoms. F.O., he arrived down in Denver in 1903. He's 54 years old. He stood five foot ten, weighed 110 pounds. Wow, okay. 
there's nothing left. Of Not the, much at all, no. Uh, uh, doctors actually give him six months to live. He arrives down in Denver. His health doesn't improve any. Doctors in Denver recommended he try coming up to the mountains. This is actually what brings him up here to Estes Park. The uh, month after he arrived in Estes Park, the man put on 29 pounds and his cough stopped. Really? Well, I do agree that the cooking there at the Stanley is fantastic, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, you know, he he thought that was great. So he and his wife decided to build a house up here. That's actually the first thing they built. Um, Flora Stanley, FO's wife, she was from back east, not a western mountain woman. She liked luxury. Sure. And uh, she started missing all the grand hotels of the east coast, the teas and the socials and things like that. So she was up here for a few years, and she started really missing all that stuff. 1907, F.O. decided he would build a luxury hotel in Estes. Now, back in 1907, Estes Park, there was absolutely not much here. You know, we had a couple of hunting lodges. This was a big hunting area. You mean there was no McDonald's and and Domino's Pizza right there? (laughs) <laughs> no Domino's. Nope. It's, uh, we're lucky we have a McDonald's today. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> the, uh, but actually, there was uh, some hunting lodges. There's some cabins around. It, not too much. They uh, they used to bring stagecoaches up here. So there weren't really even roads to Estes Park, just a couple of uh, stagecoach trails. Well, before F.O. builds the hotel, he's got to build the whole infrastructure for a town. So he gets the trails, turns them into roads that he could use his Stanley steamers on. He uh, built the bank, the garbage dump, the sewage plant, the water reservoir, pretty much the whole town of Estes Park. This is, uh, he also built a hydroelectric power plant. The man was way ahead of his time. No doubt, yeah. Yeah, he was right on top of things. That, uh, that hydroelectric power plant, though. That made Estes Park the first town of its size with electric lights on its downtown street. Wow. Out here in the middle of nowhere. Fancy yeah. living, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, that's how the whole thing, the whole hotel got started. He wanted people to come up here and be able to enjoy the beauty of Estes Park and the surrounding area. He was not interested in making money at all. Well, you know, and it is, it's probably one of the most peaceful places. That's become like a second home to Tim and I. Yeah. And, and the guys from the, the Ghost Hunters claim it, too. I mean, that's just like our, our home away from home is coming up to the Stanley now. It's a beautiful, beautiful environment. Hey, we have to take a quick break, Billy. We're going to come back with you and, and get some more into the stories here in a moment, okay? Okay. All right, everybody, stick, stay tuned. You're listening to Darkness Radio, your number one source for paranormal talk radio here in the Twin Cities. Every Saturday and Sunday night from 9 p.m. to midnight. Good evening and welcome back. To Darkness Radio with our very special guest, all the way from Estes Park, Colorado, Mr. Billy Ward. This is creepy music, Tim. Is this you know what this is? The Shining, isn't yeah. It? yeah. Very cool. All right, Billy. Let's uh, let's get into some more of the history of this place. And how did uh, how did Stephen King stumble upon it? <laughs> well, uh, Stephen King actually back in the early seventies, he was a teacher down at CU. He uh, used to teach writing classes down there. Actually, he applied for a job at the Boulder Daily Camera, which is the local newspaper down there, and they turned him down. Oh, really? Yeah, they wouldn't hire him. Well, he is full of shenanigans, that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, so he, now, how did this happen? Now, I mean, and this is the guy that kind of set the, the, the mode for this hotel in, in its current popular phase, right? I mean, he, he came to stay, what was it, the last day it was open for the season? It, exactly. He, uh, he was looking for an idea for his third book. He'd already finished Carrie and Salem's Lot, and he's got a couple ideas going through his head, but he doesn't really seem to be working. So a friend suggested he and his wife get out of town for the weekend, see if he could break his writer's block, and they left Boulder which is down on the front hip, front range, and they drove up to Estes Park. They get here to the town of Estes Park, and they're trying to go over the top of Trail Ridge Road, which if anybody knows anything about Colorado, Trail Ridge Road, 
they always close down about the first week in September. It, it gets so much snow, they shut it down for the season. Right. So Stephen King gets up there to the road, and he starts seeing all these little signs, road closed due to snow. He uh, gets turned around. He comes back through town of Estes Park, and he looks up on the hill, and he sees the Stanley. Now, this place back in 1973 looks nothing like it does today. Oh, really? It's, uh, yeah, it was pretty dilapidated. People hadn't put money into it for years. It looked a little spooky. Okay. Stephen King. <laughs> Makes sense. So let's go stay in the spooky hotel. Okay. He and his wife get up here. It's the last day the place was open for the season. They, uh, the main building had no heat in it until 1982. So really? this was strictly, yeah, just like the book. It was strictly a summer resort. Wow. Had caretakers and all of that. They, uh, Stephen King's not even sure if he can stay in the hotel. He gets up here and he comes in. He, he goes to the front desk. Asked the desk clerk if he and his wife could spend the night. The desk clerk tells him, if you have enough cash, I'll let you stay. We already sent all the credit cards off, but if you have the cash, I'll let you stay. Sure. He checks his wallet. He has just enough cash. Stephen King and his wife are the only ones in the hotel. All right. This is where all the ideas for the book, The Shining, came from. Actually, uh... He went into the, they went and had dinner in the restaurant. The clerk tells him, if you want something to eat, you better get back there now. We're getting ready. Everybody's leaving. You're going to be the only ones in the hotel. Right. So he goes in there. They have some dinner. His wife, Tabitha, goes back up to the room, and Stephen King decides he's going to have a couple beers at the bar. Okay. He gets the keys from the bartender. Grady was actually his name. In the movie The Shining, the bartender, his name is Grady. Yes, it is. <laughs> the, uh, it, it's our actual bartender at that time, his name was Grady. Very cool. He tossed him the keys and told Stephen King, help yourself, I'm going home. Okay. So Stephen King has an open bar. Stephen tried to get back up to his room. Okay. And he got lost in the hallways. He started roaming around the hallways looking for his room. This is where the idea hits him for the book, The Shining. All right. And uh, for those of you that have read the book, that's pretty much the whole story right there. Now, didn't he have some kind of ghostly encounter in his room, though, in 217? Well, 217 is is the, the Stephen King room. That's what we call it now. Mm -hmm. That's where he and Tabitha actually stayed. It's a beautiful room. You guys, you guys know, right? Yeah, we've been we we get to yeah. ghost hunt it every time we're there. Oh yeah, did you guys get anything this time? Yeah, actually, we had some great EVPs up there. I know the first night we did that, uh, Susan, I believe Susan and Kim, who were stationed up there, had some great EVPs and some K two conversations. Uh, the second night when Chris Fleming was up there, they had our Shack Hack, which is a radio that's been modulated. I gave I gave you yeah. a co one of those radios. Oh yeah, maybe you should go in there by yourself, Billy. <laughs> He turned on the radio, and they started talking, and it started responding to them. They said they had a fantastic conversation oh, with wow. some kind of entity in the room. Huh. Now, who's believed to haunt that room? Well, the room is, uh, it's always been where all the dignitaries have stayed. Mm -hmm. um, Teddy Roosevelt stayed there. Molly Brown stayed there. The Emperor of Japan has stayed there. Uh, Lisa Marie Presley. Oh, sure. there. The Princess of Pop, I got gotcha. you. That's right. <laughs> no Elvis sightings. So look at that, Tim. I've slept in the same bed with... Uh, with uh, Stephen King? No, Lisa Marie Presley. <laughs> oh. I guess Stephen King, too. But well, there you go. Yeah. I don't know. They, they said it would never last. Too. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so... You got a groovy kind of love? Now, didn't uh, Stephen King's clothes get put away as well? Isn't now, that one of the rumors? The the story... Go, the uh, Actually, what happened, this is a fact. Back in 1911... This was one of the first all-electric hotels. Mm -hmm. Well, up in the rooms, you used to lose electricity all the time. So in the guest rooms, you had an electric light that was attached to acetylene gas lamps. Oh, that's safe. Yeah, right through the same fixture. Oh, geez. Well, 1911, there's a maid up there. Power goes off. She's up there lighting the lamps, trying to get light up there. 
there's a gas leak in the room. The whole front of the hotel blows off. Oh. That whole wing where 217 is, bam, gone. Well, when that happened, the maid fell through the floor. It blew a hole in the floor. Right. She fell through and she crash landed down below, ended up breaking both of her legs. She's badly burned, uh, badly injured. F.O. Stanley, the kind of guy he was, he paid all of her bills, all of her medical bills, sure. put her up in the hotel and took care of her, ended up giving her a raise and a promotion. 1911, there's no workman's cop. He could have tossed her out on the street and been done with it, but right. he took care of his people. Very nice. The maid's name was Elizabeth Wilson. Mrs. Wilson, she was so thankful for the way F.O. treated her. She worked for the hotel into the 1950s. Wow. She was here 40 years. It's believed she is the one who's still in 217. Um, no. Like putting clothes away. People, to this day, I'll still get reports. People will check into the room. They'll put their luggage in the room. They'll go out horseback riding or hiking, enjoying the area. They come back to the room a couple hours later, and all their clothes are put away in the dresser drawers. Wow. See, how come that never happens for us when we're there, Billy? <laughs> Every time I'm there, it's just uh, nothing, man. i, I got to put my own clothes away. It's just not fair. <laughs> the light turn on in the bathroom? No, you know, water does turn on in my bathroom for me all the time. That's been happening quite often here in, in a bunch of rooms. Yeah. Just recently. Yeah, we got the, yeah, the water was uh, blasting on and off. Um, I had that happen to me twice at this. I came into the room. Actually, the TV was on. When I, I turned the TV off, I'd leave. I'd come back. The TV was back on. You know, I'm kind of skeptical on that because somebody with the same remote could accidentally turn it on from another, t you know, from another room. I, I know that there are remotes that can do that. So I don't put too much stock into that, but I'd be laying there and the water would go on in the bathroom. And it wasn't one of those motion sensors it was the actual knobs you had yeah. to turn and the water would go on for me yep that's uh we've getting i've been getting that report from several different rooms lately which is a little strange those are not easy faucets to turn on and off not at all there's, yeah there's no way you're going to turn that thing on full blast and that's what several of the people have been reporting lately we have to take our, our next break here, Billy. Stay tuned. Stay with us for about another three minutes here. We're going to take a quick break, some update and news. We'll be back more with Billy Ward from the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado, right here on your home for Paranormal Talk Radio. Really, Tim? Yeah, I had to. A little Rocky Mountain High? Yeah, I wanted to get this stuck in your head before the show was you over. You are a jerk, sir. Well, thank you. You know that John Denver sticks with me. He haunts me. <laughs> he haunts I, I, me, too. I hear his songs all the time. It drives me nuts. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show, Scary Radio Show with John Denver bumper music. We've got uh, our guest on the line is Billy Ward. Billy's the historian and the uh, tour guide at the historic Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. And uh, Billy, we were uh, talking about Stephen King's experiences. Now, he heard the kids in the hallway, which gave him the idea for the creepy little girls, right? Yes. And he heard some of the stuff. And, and folks, we were just out at the Stanley Hotel and uh, just did our live event there. We had a great little Halloween costume party uh, as well. And we had those. Did you see the two girls dressed up as the creepy girls from The Shining there, Billy? The twin girls? Yeah. I sure did. They were great. We're going to be actually, go to check out my website. If you go to darknessradio.com and then click on my MySpace page, it's not up tonight, but I'm hoping to get all the pictures in tomorrow from The Stanley. We're going to have up all the pictures of the great costumes that were there. But these girls were dead on. They were so good. And they, they even walked and stepped together. It was freaky as hell. Um, but Billy, now you're kind of nervous about the ghosts there, aren't you? You're not real keen on the stories and, and ghost hunting, are you? Oh, the concert hall bothers me. Every time I go down to the concert hall, uh, something strange seems to happen. I've never felt anything threatening in the main building or the, some of the other outbuildings. But I'm not very fond of the concert hall. Well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up. We alluded to this fact in the beginning of the show that we got some really interesting video. And um, it's good. we're going to try to post it as soon as we get it back from the uh, listener that was there at the event. There were a couple of our friends that were standing there uh, by some, some of those chairs. And, you know, those heavy chairs that are in the, the concert hall, they had them stacked up against the walls. Yeah. So it was open for them to ghost hunt in. Well, there's a picture, I guess, of them taking a picture of the girl in the room. And then in the next picture, the chair is actually lifting up off the rack, coming at her. And somebody caught it on videotape as a chair launched itself towards her in the concert hall. Um, so we've had that happen. I know when we were there, 
Um, last time, the uh, one, down in the electrical room, there was some tables set up against the wall and then some of the chairs in front of them. As soon as we left the electrical room, we were out there chatting. All of a sudden, there was a loud wham. We went back in and opened the door, and in the middle of the room, one of the tables had somehow mysteriously flipped over the chairs and slammed itself into the middle of the room. We've got crazy EVPs from in the bathrooms down there. Uh, just crazy light anomalies, photographs, just really strange stuff. Why, why are you so unnerved by the uh, by the concert hall? Is it because of all of that activity? All of that activity, and it it happens all of the time, any right. hour of the day. The uh, it, every time I go down there, something strange happens. Actually, uh, this weekend was the longest I had ever spent any time down in the concert hall. I went down there, and uh, Jason and Grant were doing the investigations down there, and I was down there for an hour. That's the longest I've ever been in that building. <laughs> Did you see anything during their investigation? No. <laughs> I, uh, I, I have one door that I really have a problem with, one of the storerooms. This door, every time I go down there with any of the groups or anything, this one door just seems to always be the one that opens and closes by itself. Right. Is that the one to the little electrical storage room? Yep. Yeah, we've actually, last time we were out there too, we had a group that went down there ghost hunting, and they've caught it on video as they were approaching it. It slammed shut at them. And then when they were all sitting in the room videotaping the door, the door is sitting there, and all of a sudden it just swings and slams itself shut, and we got that on video. So I'm, I, I do have that on DVD. I'm going to try to get that, Mike, uh, get it out to my web guys, Mike and Delia, and have them try to put it up on the site. But speaking of Mike... Billy, on the line with us, we've got um, author Marley Gibson, and she's actually writing a really great uh, novel series that will be out this year uh, called Ghost Huntress. She was with us at the Stanley, and she wanted to share a story about um, something she saw when she was just there with us at this trip, all right? Okay. All right, Marley, are you there with us? I'm here. All right, welcome to the show. Now, what uh, what happened? Tell me about this now. Okay, sure. Um, the second night of investigation, we were in the group that was not going to see with the celebrities so we had a little group together and we thought we would go look on the third the second and third floor that night and there were about i'd say maybe seven or eight of us and we were walking down the third floor corridor towards the back and um we were walking down the corridor and we looked down the very end of the hall where the light is coming in and i saw a figure i saw a full human figure, black outline. You could see the shoulders and the arms and the head. And I turned to Mike and I said, do you see that? And he said, yes. And we turned to our friend Stephanie and she said, I see it too. So all three of us saw it and then we flashed our flashlight down the end of the hall and there was nobody down there. And at that moment I realized that we had seen a full body apparition and I just got chill bumps all over my entire body and I burst into tears. It was really? that emotional. Now you get a lot of those. Thanks for calling in, Marley. We appreciate that. You get a lot of uh, that type of activity, don't you? There, Billy, you get a lot oh, yeah. of the shadow people. The uh, actually, I would. Uh, the question I would ask Molly is: Was the lady dressed like a maid? You know what? Sadly, I just disconnected her. Maybe I can get her to answer in the chat room, Tim, and you can uh, check that out for us. What, did, did the spirit that you see did it seem to be dressed like a maid, or was it just a dark figured shadow at the end of the hall? Um, Billy, too. You know something that that threw me for a loop on this trip. The first night that we were there, a couple of the ladies decided they were going to go out and just kind of walk around the grounds, and they went out to the gazebo. Did you hear the story yet or no? Yeah, I sure did. And they, they were out there in the gazebo, and it was just two women, and they're standing there, and they have their little EVP recorder, their their radio, or, or not radio, but their um, audio recorder, and they're talking, and then they very distinctly, all by themselves, hear a man go, record. And they looked at each other, and they played back the recording. And we are going to have this on in a future show, folks, because they are sending me all these EVPs. She plays back the recording. They hear them talk, and then it's like it leans right into the microphone. You very clearly hear a male voice say, record. And then did you hear about the second night? I didn't hear much on the second night. They went out there again, and they brought another friend. So there's three ladies out in the gazebo. They're trying to do an EVP sweep, and again, for you newbies, that's electronic voice phenomena. That's where you run an audio recorder, and you try to pick up disembodied voices. Billy, this one was crazy, because I've heard some crappy EVPs in my life. Well, and, yeah. You know, staticky, and you can't really make up what they're saying. But as these three women are talking, very clearly, you hear a man say, kiss me. 
and he just leans into the mic and says that during the ghost hunt. I mean, it's freaky to hear it, but it's just this, just this very kind kind of sly guy voice you just hear lean in and kiss me right while they're talking. Did you end up hearing that one or no? No, I didn't hear that one. That uh, that gives me the chills. Yeah, well, you know, Billy, at least you know you can get a little loving out on the old gazebo now if you're feeling lonely. The uh, the gazebo, we just built that thing. It's actually it's a they built it for to do some of the weddings that we get up here. Sure, but it's a rose garden. Roses were Mrs. Stanley's favorite flower, and that's why we built that rose garden out there was to kind of appease her. So I that's the first we just got it done. So that's the first I've heard any stories. Yeah. Out in the gazebo. That was really interesting. Yeah, it's very cool to get that. And you know what's interesting too then is it then it starts to make you question the type of hauntings that we might be dealing with. Are we dealing with a residual was it was it a groom that they were picking up saying kiss me to his bride? Uh, yeah. And we're just picking up that little snippet of of audio. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting uh, interesting setup. But, yeah, we had some great activity. I know the girls got some great EVP. And then now 418, which has been always a pretty active room for us. Oh, yeah. Billy, and we'll have Kim uh, put the audio up here soon, too. Our friend Kim was doing an uh, EVP session in there, and it was just Kim, and, and I think there was about seven or eight other people, and they started asking questions. She had her, her audio recorder set to uh, voice activated. So it sounds like the questions come in rapid succession, but that's because as long as nobody's speaking, it just you know starts recording again as soon as somebody talks. So she says, like, are you glad we're here? You know, Do you like living here? How long have you lived here? And then she says, do you like the toys people bring you? And very clearly you hear this little girl's voice say, yes. Oh, and it's, I mean, it's dead on. It's its like uh, one of the highest quality. This is some of the best EVP we've heard at any of our events were the two that we got this lady getting the record, Kiss Me, and the um, Yes EVP from uh, Susan and Kim down in the uh, room 418. So this was just crazy on this. You, uh, now, what what's 418? Is there anything specific that you know about that room? 418 is always, uh, since before I started here, that is the room that all the psychics have said, most of the psychic energy comes out of there. Um, that is believed to be the room where the uh, the ghost children hang out. They used to play up there on the fourth floor hallways. The uh, ghost children they were thought they were thought to be the son and the daughter of one of the maids who used to work in the hotel, and they had died at an early age of illness, not in the hotel, but they died while they were young, and they didn't. They didn't know anything better. They must have had a good time playing up there in the hallway, and it's thought that's why they're still back there. And it's thought they base out of 418. That's their room. Wow. So. Interesting. Yeah, we've we've picked up some of the most fascinating EVPs from these sites, so it's uh, it's great. Yeah, uh, just a crazy amount of stuff that goes on in these um, locations. Now, what uh, what do you know? What do you find of all the rooms? Which ones have the most experiences? And tell us a couple of the celebrity. Oh, you know, Tim's signaling me. we got to take a quick break. Okay. Let's take our break. We'll come back, and then you fill us in on some of the celebrity sightings of spirit activity there, okay? Okay. All right. You guys stay tuned, too. You're listening to Darkness Radio, your home for paranormal talk radio every Saturday and Sunday night. Good evening. Welcome back to the Darkness on the Edge of Town Paranormal Radio Show. I'm your host, Dave Schrader. If you're interested in taking advantage of some of the events that we do and go on these great trips, check out our website at darknessevents.com. We've got a bunch of great events coming up here. As a matter of fact, we still have tickets available for the Waverly Hill Sanatorium in 2009, May 10th through the 14th in Louisville, Kentucky. We're also doing our first ever UFO event that's going to be taking place at Trout Lake, Washington. UFO and Skywatch over Gilliland's Assetti Ranch in Trout Lake, Washington. Just the one that's featured on the A&E hit TV series, Paranormal State. Um, come on out and join it with us there. I've been out there three times. I've seen some of the most amazing things ever. And then come join me next week on my birthday. I'm going to be out at the Seven Sisters Inn in Ocala, Florida, November 21st and 22nd. We're going to be ghost hunting the Seven Sisters Inn with haunting evidences Patrick Burns, ghost hunters Kristen Gartland, and ghost hunters international Rob Demarest, plus me, Dave, from Darkness Radio. We'll be out there. For more information and tickets, go to sevensistershaunt.com. Spell that S-E-V-E-N, sisters, 
haunt.com. I do hope you'll join us out there. We have some other fantastic stuff coming out. We're going to be at the uh, Eisenhower Hotel March 26th, 27th, and 28th in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, 2009. Um, and the Queen Mary, of course, coming up in a few weeks, but those are sold out. So any of the other events you'd like to ch- join us with, check out our website at Darkness Events. Dot com and we're going to go back uh, to Billy we've got on the line with us Billy I'm just checking the uh, uh, web here and Marley got back to me she said it was definitely a male apparition that they saw in the hallway huh interesting uh, huh? the reason I asked that is I've seen uh, people have seen what looks like a maid dressed in an old time maid outfit with the long dress right in the in that hall that's why I was asking if uh, it could have been a an apparition of a maid. Billy, now we have a caller on online here who would like to ask you a question. And uh, Larry, you're on the line with Billy. You have a question for him? Hey, Billy, how you doing? This is Larry, uh, Stephanie Chad. Hey, Larry, how you doing? Oh, pretty good. Stephanie says to say hello. <laughs> hey, uh, the question I had for you, Billy, is there was some activity down the uh, employee passageway. Is is anything uh, come out of there recently? The, the uh, employee passageway, this is kind of interesting. When I was doing the uh, the tours for Darkness Radio, the employee passageway for fans of the Ghost Hunters, um, Jason and Grant, that's where they heard a voice say, hello, hello, right. and then a little girl giggle. Well, when I was doing one of the, af- one of the morning tours with the Darkness Radio people, we were down there in the hallway, and it's right in front of the... Uh, the tunnel is right in front of the computer room. So most gauges, uh, K2 meters and all that. EMF detectors, right. Yeah, it doesn't work very well down there because of all the electricity running down there. But uh, one of the guys set up one on the floor right in front of the tunnel, and there wasn't a whole lot of readings. And uh, we went down there, and we were asking if the little girl was there that Jason and Grant heard. And when we started asking the question, it was a male that asked the question. No response. Hmm. The uh, the guy I was with, he said, well, maybe he doesn't re- maybe she doesn't respond to male voices. Why don't one of you ladies give it a try? And this lady stepped up there and she said, honey, we're not going to hurt you. Don't be afraid of the lights. Come close to the green light. It's not a candle. It's not going to burn you. Just a, it's kind of a toy. And when she said that, the it pegged. The K2 times, just lit up, huh? K2 lit up all the way into red. And then it was gone after she asked the question. Interesting. That uh, was really a strange response. It's not like it picked up the uh, electrical from the computer room or anything. It, uh, it was in response to the question to approach the K2 meter. It was really interesting. Now, I know, Larry, we got a bunch of cool EVP down there as well from uh, Susan and Kim. They're going to try to share that with us. And we had we had the little girl's voice call out to us while we were down there at one point. So I know, well, what we believe to be a little girl. We got some pictures down there in the hallway of uh, kind of a, like a green form. It was. I was taking some pictures down there. didn't even realize I had this, but in the two pictures taking about seven seconds apart, you see kind of like a little green form coming out of that cave. And then seven seconds later, the picture, the next picture takes, and this thing is about five feet closer to the camera. Wow. And I just thought that was interesting. All right. Well, uh, Larry, thanks a lot for calling in and being a part of the show tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And, Billy, now, I, I'm just curious, too, maybe you can allay this. Uh, is this fact or fiction that behind the Stanley Hotel is the – very famous, well-known pet cemetery as well? <laughs> we do have a pet cemetery up here on the grounds. It is actually where Mrs. Stanley buried her cat originally. Okay. And people associated with the hotel over the years, they've always buried their pets over there. It is not the same pet cemetery as the one Stephen King uses in the book. Okay. The pet cemetery. That came from a pet cemetery that was up in Maine is where that idea came from. So, <laughs> All right. So, well, uh, that's good to clear up because I know a lot of people have speculation that that was also the pet cemetery up there. We've just got a couple of minutes left, Billy. It's been a great time talking with you. How can people um, 
contact you or order a, can they order that book from you guys as well yes um the book it's called uh, the stanley hotel 1909 to 2009 celebrating 100 years um coffee table book some beautiful pictures in there um they can get that i can uh, get it off to them if they contact me at area code 970 Five seven seven four one one zero, or they can email me at the uh, Stanley Hotel. It's bward at stanleyhotel dot com. All right. Again, so if you're interested in ordering a copy of that book, and Billy, you'll sign them for him as well, correct? Oh yes. Oh, you'll yeah. sign the book, and it's a beautiful book, ladies and gentlemen. We get a chance to see it. Right to bward at stanleyhotel dot com, and uh, you can order it there. Or what's the phone number again, Billy? The phone number uh, for the my desk is area code nine seven zero five seven seven four one one zero. All right. Well, Billy, I can't thank you enough for being with us this evening and spending some time here. We'd yeah. love to have you back again in the future and tell us if any other cool stories are coming up. Because we didn't even get a chance to talk about the celebrity sightings. Oh yeah, that took place. But uh, why don't we do that? We'll try to have you come back in uh, maybe a couple weeks, and we'll have you come in and fill us in on some of the celebrity sightings when we do the update on the evidence that we we're able to collect. Would you do that for us? Sure, I would love to. All right, great. To. Well, thank you very much, Billy. You have a great night, and uh, we appreciate you spending some time here. Oh, it was my pleasure, Dave. Thank you, sir. Hey, guys, stay tuned with us because we are going to be back with more. And, again, join Tim and I tomorrow out at the uh, Radisson in Roseville for Crypticon Minneapolis. It's a fantastic time. A lot of great celebrities, a lot of great local people are there. You can come see some of the cool stuff going on in the horror genre. And uh, you get a chance to meet people like James Duvall, who played the rabbit uh, guy in Donnie Darko. You can also meet Chris Sarandon, who played... Prince Humperdinck, he was uh, um, the voice of Jack Skellington in the movie uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. He was also um, uh, Jerry Dandridge, the creepy vampire from the uh, classic cult favorite Fright Night. Um, uh, Doug Jones is out there as well, who was in uh, um, the Hellboy series. He played Abe Sapien. He was uh, in Hellboy 1 and 2. He was also the Silver Surfer in the new Fantastic Four movie that was just out. Um, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper, is there. The lovely Kelly Maroney, the ass-kicking zombie-killing cheerleader, is out there as well, signing autographs. A lot of great people, a lot of fun going on. And our buddies from Transylvania TV, the guys from Ghostbusting 911. Again, check out TransylvaniaTV.com. You can also check out Ghostbusting 911. Um, you can go to MySpace.com to Ghostbusting. That's B-U-S-T-I-N, 911. Check that out. Stay tuned with us, though. We've got some exciting stuff coming up. Plus, we're going to still give away. We've got about three or four more tickets to give you away for Twilight, um, the movie premiere. Listen for the uh, time to call in. But stay tuned. We're going to be back talking to James Duvall, Chris Sarin, and Doug Jones, and John Kassir right after the top of the hour break. You're listening to the best in paranormal talk radio right here every Saturday and Sunday night, 9 to midnight. Give us a call if you have any interest in any more shows. You're listening to Darkness Radio.